Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 52. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 4 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is our last video for chapter 4 and we want to talk about multiple regression hypothesis testing. Now here is a data set we used in our earlier video about multiple regression. We want to be able to predict risk of stroke over the next 10 years given age, blood pressure, and smoker. So here's our raw data. We need to calculate our sample statistics for slope and y-intercept and do hypothesis testing to see if there's a significant relationship. Now, last video we did, and if you scroll over here, you can see, hey, this is awesome. This is data analysis regression feature. A few clicks, and we have everything we want. But that doesn't work if your data is changing. So the beauty of Excel formulas, if we had this linked here and any of this changed, then instantly everything would update. Now we can get most of the regression statistics that we need from the line est function, but not all of them. So we're going to use the line est function up here, and then down here we'll use a couple extra functions. Now here's the deal. One, two, three three independent variables. That means when you're using the line est or line straight function, you have to highlight in advance one, two, three, four columns. It's always one more column than there are independent variables. And here's the reason why. It'll list one, two, three slopes and the intercept like that. Now there's a strange thing about using line est to deliver multiple statistics. Notice we have x1, x2, and x3 from left to right. But when it lists the slopes, it's going to lift list 3 first, then 2, then 1, left to right. So you have to be aware of that. And I usually have a little template like this that reminds me what all the statistics are. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4 columns, one more than their independent variables, and always 5 rows. And then we type equals line est. And it's, hey, line straight or line estimate. It wants the known y's, there we go, comma, and the known x's. And notice we're not including the field names like we did in our regression data analysis feature. And then comma, I'm going to calculate b normally. So I'm putting a 1 for true. And comma, I want all the additional statistics past slope and intercept. So I type a 1, close parentheses. Line est is an array function. It's going to deliver an array of values simultaneously into a bunch of highlighted cells. So we have to tell Excel that we're doing an array function with the keystroke Control, Shift, and Enter. Now if you look up here, you can see those curly brackets. That means Excel understood that we entered this as an array function. Wow, look at that. We have slope for our 3, which is the smoker. Slope for 2, which is our blood pressure. Slope for 3, which is our age. And finally, y-intercept. And right there, that's the standard error for slope x sub 3, standard error for for slope x sub 2. There's the standard error of the standard deviation for that slope and for the y-intercept. Here's the coefficient of determination. Right here is going to be our standard error of y. Degrees of freedom, SS residual or error, SSR, and there's our F test statistic. Now we do want to calculate our predicted and residuals. And I already went ahead and did this. I multiplied each one of the slopes times each one of the x's and added the y-intercept and copied it down and then calculated our residuals. Now we need to plot the residuals against our each one of our x's. And I'm going to do this one time. I'm going to highlight the residuals and then hold Control, highlight age. And our x is on the left, so this should work. Insert, we go over to Scatter, Markers, Green Arrow, Axis Titles, Solid Line around this one. Equal sign shoots me up here. I say Residuals and Enter. I click on the vertical axis. Equals, Age and Enter. And there's, so there's Residual Plot 1. Now watch, I'm going to totally cheat. 
I'm going to copy this, this chart here, Control-C, click down here, Control-V, click on the actual values, and then I'm simply going to move this right here to blood pressure, click on this axis, equal sign to shoot me up here, and then click on blood pressure. And instantly I have residuals for blood pressures. Then I'm going to do the same thing, Control-V, click on the markers, click on the edge here and drag it over. Click on the axis equal sign. Click on the smoker label here and enter. So I have my residual plots. And so we're looking in that those don't show any strong violation. So we'll continue with our process. Now, once we know that we can do inference, there's our F test statistic, but there's no P value. So we have to use the equals F dot. And there's a dist dot right, because this is going to be a right tail test. The distribution functions always deliver a probability. So there's our x. That's going to be our f, comma, and degrees of freedom. The first degrees of freedom is the number of independent variables. And I don't have that anywhere, so I'm going to count the actual slopes here, 1, 2, 3. So the information will come right from there. That's the degrees of freedom, 1, comma, degrees of freedom. We have 20 spit out from our line estimate function. Close parentheses, and there is the p-value, incredibly small. Now, the t-stat for each one of our statistics, well, the t-stat is simply the actual statistics divided by the standard error. So I'm going to say equals relative cell reference, that many up, and then relative cell references get the standard deviation, control, enter, and copy this over. And so for each one of these, we have our T test statistic. And we need P value for those. We're going to use equals T dot. And this is a two tail test. So I'm going to use two tail. Now, this is a new, relatively new function. And that x requires that it's on the upper end. And so in case you have a test statistics that's negative, we got to use the ABS. That's the absolute value function. All right, I'm going to click on the test statistic. Close parentheses. That's our x, comma, and degrees of freedom. There it is. And I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. Close parentheses. Control Enter and copy it over. So in all cases, all of these are much smaller than our alpha of 1 or 5%. So in all cases, we would reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. It's reasonable to it's very reasonable to assume that the slopes and the y-intercept are not zero. All right, so in our last video for regression chapter, we saw how to use the line est function. And it's a little bit harder than doing our data analysis regression feature. But if you need formulas to link to the data and update, then that is your ticket. And we also saw how to calculate the t test statistic, how to use t.dist.2tail and the abs function for our p value for our t statistic, and f.dist.right for our p value for f. All right, this is our last video for Chapter 4. We'll see you next chapter and next video.